we about to land that thing nice and soft like a butterfly on a lily. But how much runway do we need? Here's how to calculate that thing. Let go! Boom! Calculating your landing distance for every airport that you plan to touch down on can be a fun way and open up an endless amount of possibilities for you to do all types of fun landings. But you need to know, do you have enough runway to execute whatever kind of fun maneuver or landing that you're trying to do? And there's a very cool way to calculate that. We're going to get into that thing. And there's also a bonus tip that you must know when it comes to calculating landing distance. I'll give you that as well at the end of this video. Let's get into that thing. Hey, turn off the lights. Whoa, and light a candle. One time, we back up in this thing with the landing distance calculation and chart. Again, to calculate this very similar to what we did when we calculated the takeoff distance. If you want a review of how to calculate takeoff distance, there's a video on this channel reviewing that in detail. There'll be a link to that video at the end of this video right here, where them links be at. Make sure you watch that video because calculating takeoff distance, it complements the landing distance. And I'll tell you why at the end of this video right here. Let's get into that thing. Hey, boom. So check it. You know the vibe. Go to your pilot operating handbook, go to the performance section, usually section five, and look for the landing distance chart. Boom! And you find that thing, it's right after you scroll past that takeoff distance chart that we used in the previous video. Find the landing distance chart, and once you get up on that thing, you're going to see it, and it's going to look something just like this. Very similar to the takeoff distance chart. And not only are we gonna make this fun, we're gonna make it very fun by using the exact same conditions because I want you to see something, how the exact same conditions impact your takeoff distance versus your landing distance. So the conditions that we're gonna do, of course, we're gonna be swinging and banging and we're gonna do a short field landing. Just like we did a short field takeoff, we're gonna do a short field landing. Our conditions, we got our weight and balance on that thing. We had 1670, boom, we loaded up in that thing. And then of course, our pressure altitude, Let's put that as a thousand. Our temperature is still 30 degrees Celsius and our wind is still a nine knot headwind. These are the exact same conditions that we had in the previous video for our takeoff distance chart. Let's see how these exact same conditions impact our landing distance for the short field. So boom, okay, you get to that chart and the first column you're gonna see on your left hand side of course is the weight. You weight it up in that thing, you know what that is. You know how to calculate weight and balance because you reviewed the video on this channel. The easiest way to calculate weight and balance, that video is on this channel, link at the end of this video. You also calculated the pressure altitude. You know exactly what pressure altitude is and you know how to easily calculate it because you watch the videos on this channel link at the end of this video for that as well so you got that information you're just going to follow that weight of course what you have there you're going to go across it's going to tell you something about what speed you should be at right there how many knots you should be of course when you're 50 feet away you look for that as well it's giving you that good advice and then you come over to the next one of course we know what our pressure altitude is again we're going to follow it it's going to be the same at a thousand and then we're going to get to the temperature our temperature is still 30 degrees celsius nice and toasty out in that thing. And then you're gonna have the ground roll section. And then of course, you're gonna have that total clear the 50 foot obstacle. Let's play the same game and act as if we're gonna clear the 50 foot obstacle. We had to clear the 50 foot obstacle to get out on takeoff distance. Let's say we have to clear the 50 foot obstacle to land that thing in a short field landing. So we're gonna be looking at that column right there. So you say to yourself, oh, that was fairly easy. Once I have all of my conditions, I just found it where it was. I went straight across on the line and then boom, I got 1270, so I'm gonna need at least 1270 feet of runway. Boom, but remember, when we get to that 1270, we're not done yet. We still have a couple more steps and a couple more things we gotta do. Number one, look on that same chart and you're gonna see some notes, some notations telling you various things that you need to do to execute, telling what your degrees of flaps need to be to get to that short field. But it's also gonna tell you something about the winds. If you're dealing with maybe a headwind, it's gonna tell you that, oh, for every nine knots of headwind, you need to decrease your distance by 10%. So, okay, if we're already at 1270, we're dealing with a nine knot headwind, just like we were dealing with a nine knot headwind when, of course, we were taking off. So it tells us we need to decrease our distance by 10%. So if we take 10%, percent off at 1270 what are we left with boom we are left with 1143 so just a little bit over a thousand feet of runway at 1143 that we need that but hey we are not done and here's one of the most critical parts there you take that 1143 and you think to yourself we've calculated the chart we went through the performance metrics we've added the notations what else is there to do 
always remember what kind of aircraft you're dealing with. A lot of the aircraft that are flying around these days are older types of aircraft. Many of them are decades old, particularly the aircrafts that you may be training in. So you, these performance charts were written when the aircraft was fresh right off the assembly line. That was many decades ago. So what's the likelihood that that aircraft can still perform at the highest level like it did 20, 30, 40 years ago? Highly unlikely. It's like you having an antique sports car. You may have yourself an old school Lambo or an old school Ferrari. It's an antique. Hey, it can still go. It's still a sports car, but it doesn't go the same way it did when it first came off the assembly line. The performance is a little bit softer. Same thing with the plane. So you have to compensate for that. You have to calculate that, make that into your calculations to protect yourself for safety reasons. So what can you do that as a natural rule of thumb? Just like on the takeoff video, on the landing video, you're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna take that 1143 and we're gonna add 50% to that thing. And when we add 50% to that 1143, boom! We get 1714. We're gonna do a nice little even roundup just to always take the conservative high value on that to always be a little bit more than what you need. Again, remember, always overestimate your distances for takeoff distance and for landing distance so you can always have more than what you need and thinking in your mind versus not having enough so boom you get to that 1800 on that thing so we can swing and bang that thing and be flapped out up in that thing and short fill it all we want and do our nice breaking and take off on that first taxiway all within 1800 nice and easy hey boom and now for the bonus tip that really gets you through your aviation journey when it comes to takeoff distance and landing distance. Make notation of this. In this video, we did the same exact conditions that we had in the previous video about taking off. We followed the same exact parameters, no difference. But you notice that at the end game, our landing distance for the short field, we need 1,800 feet of runway. To take off in these same exact conditions, same exact, same exact airport, we needed 2,500 feet of runway to take off. Notice the difference. You need more runway to take off than you do to land. That is key. And that is something that you always want to keep in your mind, particularly when you're traveling around and bouncing around from airport to airport. You want to make sure that if you go to a certain destination, not that you just have enough runway to land there, you want to make sure when it's time to get up out of that thing, you have enough runway to take off. Because let's just say if you were at an airport that only had a 2,000 foot runway. You calculated you were conservative high value that you need 1,800 to land. So you can safely land there and you can get in and nice. But could you get out of there when we did the same calculation and it said that you needed 2,500 just to get out of there? This is why this is critical. And this is why you always, particularly for real world flying, going from one airport to the next, you may be dealing with small runways. It may be a scenario where you flying into an airport and they have multiple runways, but the larger runway may be closed and they only have the small one open. You need to know is the small one sufficient enough for you to get in and out of there. Not just in there, but out of there too when it's time to take off. Another case scenario, let's just say you're at an airport and they have a nice, beautiful, long runway. But for whatever particular reason, it may be jam packed and ATC and someone may tell you, hey, you know, are you ready to um, take, could you take off on a shorter runway? Maybe instead of going all the way down to the inner runway, could you take off right here? You will, deal, you will be dealing with 3,000 feet of runway. Is 3,000 feet enough to do what you need to do in your aircraft? You know that in the back of your mind. Maybe initially you were planning to use the full runway, but now that you have an opportunity to only use partial runway, is it enough, whatever number they give to you that said that you have enough runway? These are the reasons why you want to calculate takeoff distance and landing distance to know these things about the airports that you'll be traveling to and swinging and banging that thing. Hey, don't forget to like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and subscribe to this channel. I am Donovan Batiste, and this is Leadership Mindset, a place where you can come for free and fun videos about everything that you need to know for you to become a pilot or stay proficient. Because I want you to feel what pilots all over the world feel when we swinging and banging that thing. Love you one time. Subscribe to the channel.